Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg is laying out his vision for how the social media company uses artificial intelligence. Zuckerberg says that the goal is to focus on what he calls personal super intelligence, aiming to make everyday tasks easier and faster. Zuckerberg also posting a video on Instagram explaining how AI can give people more time for creating and connecting. A lot has been written about the scientific and economic advances that AI can bring. And I'm really optimistic about this. What I think an even more meaningful impact in our lives is going to come from everyone having a personal super intelligence that helps you achieve your goals, create what you want to see in the world, be a better friend, and grow to become the person that you aspire to be. All right, I want to bring in ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host Mike Muse for more. Good to see you, Mike. And let's talk about this. Zuckerberg posting a letter as well. Hey. And the letter that he posted... I mean, it's, it's kind of intense language, Mike. He says uh, that the next decade will likely decide whether super intelligence is a tool for personal empowerment or a force focused on replacing large swaths of society. No gray area there for him, Mike. <laughs> no, not at all, because Kena, even as you know, I am very pro-tech, but super intelligence is the next frontier, and I didn't even know that we'll achieve where conversation is super intelligent that we'll be having right now. Because of super intelligence, it is so much different. So you have like three different types of artificial intelligence, Kena. So you have, you know, the, the regular artificial intelligence that's kind of designated for a very specific task, things like Netflix, uh, right? And then like predicting, if you like this movie, then you may like that movie. And then you get to general generative AI, so think like ChatGPT, that draws upon a, a large amount of data sets in different ways and capacities. It can draw upon text, it can draw upon audio, it can draw upon video, it can draw upon images and pictures, right, to really populate outputs of something that could be useful. Super intelligence, Kena, can really get to the point of level where it becomes smarter than a human. And when you get to that level and to get to that phase, that's when you have to worry about the grayscale and really ensure the guardrails are there, which is why Mark Zuckerberg really led laid out what all the possible outcomes are. What he is saying, though, it doesn't have to just be about automating systems to what generative AI is seemingly going towards, but so much be a companion and an aid to help with your day-to-day -day things. And so companion, aid, helping with day-to-day -day things, is that <laughs> what he's really leaning into in this personal AI? I think there's two things that we can look at this, Kane. That's a really great question. One, Meta is really leaning into their wearable products. And so think about like those Ray-Ban mm. glasses that we see people wear uh, and also to those Oakleys. And so what he is saying and what Meta is really, really investing in is that if you have those Ray-Ban glasses on, as you're going about your day, I will give a real world example of how super intelligence can work when you get to that capacity. Kane, we know we have different inclement weather. Let's even look at here in the city. So if I'm walking down Fifth Avenue and I'm talking to my Ray-Ban glasses, it can t always... If I can say, what is the weather? Not just in general of the day, but it can say, you know what, Mike? It's about to rain in 3.5 minutes. You might want to take cover or at least head south 10 blocks. Because if you head south 10 blocks, the rain actually won't hit you. And then here's a shortcut that you can take to get to your apartment downtown where you can stay dry and the amount of traffic based upon maybe the subway patterns, based upon the nearest taxi, based upon the nearest Uber. So it can kind of get you on your path so that you can stay dry the entire time until it becomes a downpour in your particular particular part of the neighborhood. That's how super intelligence works. It can really draw upon and learn upon an incredible amount of data sets to really give you that capacity. So with the wearables, it could be your companion, it could be your friend, and I use those terms loosely, but that is a way that you can use it as an aid. And that is what Zuckerberg and Meta is hoping that these wearables will become, is that personal human concierge, if you will. Interesting. Okay, so you're highlighting some of the positives there. What are the risks of something like that, yeah. though, Mike? Yeah, yeah, the risks are really staggering, Kane. I'm not even going to hold you. As you know, I'm really pro-tech, as I've said before. But this is why federal Congress has got, the federal um, government has got to get serious when it comes to what is going to be our AR principles. How do we want to have governing principles that doesn't stifle innovation, but at the same time protects, protect society from this fact of a machine can learn at a higher and quicker rate than humans? If you don't work with tech companies to make sure that they're in partnerships to be of service and good uh, to mankind, that is one of the things that we have to be mindful of. Wow. All right. Mike Muse, our thanks to you as always.